and Godwin Asediba is right here. And Godwin, uh, these are very cold or chilling stories coming from the Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. And there's um, an antagonist or an individual who has been mentioned there. He's very popular in Ghana. That's yeah. one man supporter. Mm -hmm. So what's happening to them currently? Um, they are at the moment stuck. Um, in some place around Kostroma, which is in the western part of um, Russia. Okay. Yeah. At the uh, war front? Yes. At the heart of it? They are in a makeshift structure, remaining three at the moment. So the commander comes in and then points at you, you come. We are going to the war front. Um, apparently, when they got there, they had to undergo a 21-day training for the war. But they actually thought they were going there for, you know, security job opportunity. So when it got to that point and they realized that it wasn't the security that they had in mind, they reached back to one-man supporter to let him know that this was what was happening. Back to the time where they were signing, which I've seen uh, people raising some concerns about, the contract was uh, largely in Russian which they couldn't understand. It, the was, it was written in the Russian language. Right. So they didn't understand that and reached back to one man supporter that, oh, this is what is happening. Do you wow. think we should go ahead and sign? And he told them that, oh, in the person that spoke to me own words, he said, which literally means that, don't you trust me? Go ahead and sign it. So after the signing, they took them to Kostroma, and that's where they are at the moment. Um, surprisingly, they are treated nicely. They are being fed mm. and paid as well. Um, they well, they are, are being paid too. Exactly. So what's their hustle? It's what's about, their problem, so to speak? It, it's about the risk and where they find themselves at okay. the moment. And, and that's not what they thought they signed up for. Absolutely. Okay. So um, the conditions are definitely inhumane. You can give them the money that they want, but when they what live in What do you mean? It's a war front. Exactly, it's a war You want them to be sitting in the sitting room? That, that is not what they were anticipating okay. whilst, you know, going there. At least when you're taking someone to a place, you should let them know that this is the reason why you're leaving to this place. Do you want to do it or not? If you don't want to... Do you know whether the gentleman, the one-man supporter uh, that we all know, uh, has come back to Ghana and so whether they've been able to reach him? Right, so I've had about two contacts. I've tried reaching him. I haven't been able to do so. And I went to um, his office somewhere around Tesano as well. I wasn't able to do so as well. The families of some of the victims who are selling Kostroma have also tried reaching him. And he's nowhere to be found. So um, they are hoping that this story would be able to trigger some sort of conversations to, you know, bring them back home. Well, certainly. Well, we have a number of callers uh, who will be also contributing to this subject. Do you know some of these um, great stories that are mimicked posted on social media and subsequently ordinary Ghanaians get enticed. Good morning to you. What's your name? Where are you calling us from? Good morning. Uh, my name is Akoto Reza from Tamar. Okay. Akoto Reza, go ahead. What do you make of the story? Yes. Uh, this sad revolution about uh, the best uh, media journalist that she has brought, I think it's a good idea. It's, it's sad to wake up seeing a district teacher on air because of somebody taking from TV during a past year. He has to be in this condition. But one man supporter, if he is charged with those things, I think it's not be fair to uh, the gentleman. Mm. He, should have, he should have even respond in order to save their life. Even if they lose their money, and still have their life, that should have been better. Maybe government would have support, or maybe good people would have support. But mm. to ignore them and taking them back as if they are animals, it's not the best. Because you are also a human being. Right, right. Okay, thank you very uh, much. I'll go to the Razak. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, please, you can also call contribute to this. And we know that issues about um, migration, etc., and people's livelihoods, uh, how they tend to make ends meet, tend also to contribute as the factors for people making some of these choices. Right. Uh, so what initially, again, were this so, supposed to do? What did they think that they were signing up for? So well, I mean, were... when they were in Ghana mm -hmm. and making the contact. They were promised um, security and agricultural job opportunities in Russia. Okay. And that was the reason why the whole, they all jumped on it, thinking that it was something security. that would be... Yes, this security. This one is security. And, this is security, but um, in a different form. 
before you can go to a war front, you should be able to have the skills and go the training to be able to, you know, welcome such instances when they come your way. These people do not have um, such experiences. So if you pick them up and give them um, a 21 day training saying that you want to take them to a war mm. front, it is actually really right. You know, sad. And um, we already have another caller. Good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling us from? Good morning. Yes, Honorable. How are you? Yes, sir. How are you doing? I'm well. Oh. What's your name? I'm good. Good, good. Please, you know, this thing that you are talking about, let's just stay for the boys. We I should go in there at least. It's we... a work. It's a little better than staying in Ghana here, please. So, please, the only thing is to pay for them. Oh, really? They are stranded. Yeah, yeah. They didn't sign up to go and fight a war. Now they are at the war front. You say that, it's, of course, they are being paid, but you are saying that getting the pay is better than. But I will not get it. I will not get it. You come. What do you say? I said, don't we have soldiers in Ghana here going for some meetings with them that other countries to fight for them? Uh, what did you say your name was again? It's not a funny story, is it? My name is Tadi Bin, calling from Mamobi. Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm saying, let's only pay for them. They should be both. All and right. Both. Okay. Don't get their money. Okay. 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 So let me ask. Let, let me ask you this very humane question. If you were present, you. if you were presented with this opportunity, you knew that you were going for a conf a, a job in a conflict area. I mean, you were going to be please, at the please, war front. Please. Would you sign up? It's Would you? No, no, no. Listen, listen to me. I'm saying that. Would you have signed up if you knew what you were going to do, and it was, uh, if, uh, uh, look, you were going to fight in the war front? Okay. How, how much? I, okay, yo, yo. Thank you very much. How much are they paid? So um, they are being paid 130 rebels, which is equivalent to 67,912.42 Ghana cities. And after they are being paid Wait, that... Wait, oh, 100 and what rebels? Um, 40,000 rebels. 40,000 rebels? Yes. Every month? Yes. Okay. But in Ghana cities... But I know rebels are spent in Russia. Yes. That's what they spend. Yes, okay. exactly. Uh, but so the who, contractor who, takes a percentage. Who are they fighting for, the Russians or the Ukrainians? They are fighting for the Russians. Okay, so it's a contractor, a third party who contracted them. Absolutely. Okay. So, and they are pay, paid 40,000 rubles, yes. which is equivalent to how much in Ghana? 67,912. Oh, Every month? Every month. Every month. 67,000? Yes, but the contractor right. takes his percentage, which is also um, 130,000 rubles. And in Ghana cities, that's 22,000. No, but 67,000 so. comes to them. No, no, no. Out of the 67,000, mm. the... Um, 22,000 is deducted from that. Okay, so they yeah. get uh, how much? So um, they get somewhere around 40,000. 40, a month? About. Yes, a month. So if you survive uh, 12 months of the Russian Ukraine war, yeah, 40,000 times. <laughs> You actually be quite. No, I'm good. not making this funny. No, no, no. I mean, I think I, I, I well, the, the people, a lot of people are calling. So again, they are they are getting at least forty thousand a month over. Absolutely, which every is quite month. good. If only if but, you survive the war. Yeah. So so far, how many months have they been there? Just one. They so they went there. So already four. they already have forty thousand. Absolutely. But they they want to come back home. Yes, of course. Uh, so that should explain uh, the, what you're going through. Mm. Because if you have such an amount of money, it should take something for you to want to return back home. Mm. You understand? Okay, that's not what they sign up for, though. No. So I think many people are trying to translate that to mean that because that's what they're earning. Right. It's also because the caller from uh, Nima or Pick Farm also. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. well. What do you make of this? They are stranded. They are in a very difficult situation. They want to come back home. What do you think the government of Ghana also needs to do about this? Yes, uh, my name is Shani from Waliwali. -Wali. Shani, yes, oh, I, regular. Yeah, Please go ahead. Yeah, from Waliwali. -Wali. Yes, I think that government has to liaise with the authorities in that country mm. so that they will, they will, they will uh, uh, export them uh, or bring them back to, to, to this country. But you see, in, in, in we have to look at uh, some, some forces. We have full. The pull factors and the push factors. Very good. Sir. The push factors here is the uh, Western condition of work in this country. Mm. Look at nurses want to go out, teachers also want to go out, mm. and the universities are also churning out a number of graduates who are not able to get employment opportunities. 
So when they hear that, when they go there, they will get something to do. Definitely, they will have to go. So government has to come up with a clear, deliberate policy. You understand? To ensure that the teaming group of this country who are graduating are able to get back. But they are saying that they have employed more people than any government in this country. Yes, our people are going out there as well as to suffer. Shani, 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 relax. If you were given this opportunity, let's say you knew that you're going to fight in a war front, you get 40,000 in excess every month, would you go? No, me, I, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go at all. all right. I wouldn't go because I have my work doing, even though the pay is not all that lucrative, but it's better. But I'm saying that there are people who have no option. Yes. They have to go there. That's you true. Understand? So this is what government must work on. Other mm. than that, we keep all recording, I mean, this kind of complaints and all that. Thank you very much. Shani, thank you very much. And um, Godwin, wrap up for us. So what's the next option? Are you, what are, have you liaised with the Ministry uh, uh, yes. of so uh, Foreign we, Affairs? Yes, we are hoping to get a response from, from them. We've already, you know, sent in. Uh, All right.